All right, guys, this is going to be a very important installation process. This is going to be the installation of the central processing unit or CPU. If you guys didn't watch the unboxing of the CPU that I purchased, I will post a link to the bottom of the video or in the description. Basically, so just the macro focus. This is the CPU that I got. It's a Core i5 3450 Ivy Bridge processor. So I already have everything unpackaged here. This is the CPU unit itself. And this is the stock based heat sink and fan with the thermal paste already applied. So let's get this started. Switch this back to landscape. All right. So the first step we're going to do is I think I might just remove this RAM chip right here because it feels like it's going to get in the way. So let's just do that. Let me ground myself before touching the RAM chip. All right. Let's put this in a safe place. All right. Now, the reason why I removed that is because it feels like I, I need to access this area to remove the lever, and I need more space, and the RAM chip would be getting in the way. So, what we're going to do here is simply push down on this lever and then move it outwards. If it would come, if this thing can work with me here. All right. There we go move it outwards and then it goes back then you gotta remove this black latch here like that this latch um, if you're building your own computer please do not throw this latch away this is very important it keeps the uh, pins on the motherboard safe suppose you need to transport the motherboard back to the company for warranty reasons or repair or anything for that matter if you want to sell the motherboard or something like that so when that is up you can easily remove the um the latch now let's get the cpu out of its protective case once again before i even touch the cpu i'm going to ground myself to the motherboard i mean not the <laughs> motherboard i'm going to ground myself by touching the case all right Still, you don't want to handle the CPU by directly touching the pins. You always want to hold the CPU, pretty much any other vital components, such as RAM or whatever, you always want to hold these things by the edges. You've learned this since, op like, you know, handling a CD. You don't want to hold the CD, like, like holding it like that. You're just going to smudge up the area in which the laser reads the data. I mean, a CD is not as vital. You can kind of hold it like that and your fingerprints won't really make the CD unreadable, but it's just advised that you don't do that. But uh, processor for right now, this is something you really do not want to touch any of those um, pins. It's not like if you touch it, it's going to render the CPU useless. It's just that it's very sensitive to static electricity. Even though I grounded myself to the case, I can still fry this thing if I touch it and I have enough static electricity built up on me. Also, your, your the oil in your finger, or on your skin in general, can kind of hinder the performance and the readability in which the, in the, in which the, the CPU can communicate with the motherboard and the components around the motherboard itself. So now let's install the CPU to the socket. What you're gonna do is line it up to the way the motherboard has it preset. So basically, as you can see, this little arrow right here, you're going to want to line it up with the motherboard as, it, as it's facing me right now. Let me put it back to landscape. Oh, I need a new camcorder. I'm so tired of having two focus settings. So yeah, we're just going to simply, I'm just going to drop it down into the socket. The way this works is, it's simply a, it's called a, a ZIF meaning that it's zero insertion force so there's literally there's no force in terms of you know putting the CPU in so I'm just going to show you guys again there's absolutely no force involved in placing the CPU into the CPU socket on your motherboard you just drop it in the pins automatically align so you just simply drop it in there don't drop it in from a high height, obviously, but just drop it in as close as you can to the socket uh, socket itself. And you just put this down. Make sure it's underneath the 
Make sure when you put it down, this goes underneath this screw right here. Uh, kind of having a little bit of trouble. Okay, there we go. It's underneath the screw. Now this lever, when you're pushing it down, it's gonna have a lot of, you know, retention force. It's okay. Uh, you're not gonna break it. So you simply just push it down, keep pushing, and then you just lock it underneath the latch and where it was originally at. Now the CPU is successfully installed onto your motherboard. Now the next procedure is to install the CPU heat sink and fan. So right now what I have right now is the uh, the stock heat sink and fan. It's just uh, it's, it's good to just pretty much keep the CPU from frying itself obviously but you're really not going to expect you know grade A cooling and all of that other stuff. If you want to overclock your CPU you're going to want to uh, get a more aftermarket cooler and this pretty much gonna line it like this you're gonna want to align the heat sink pretty much where it's cl the fan header is closest to the header female port on the board so I'm just gonna align it like this pretty much. I think I could just align it like this actually that's more I think more logical yeah I'll be better so so put this on. Now, just by pushing on those four pins. The, uh, the the CPU heatsink is now successfully locked to the motherboard and it, it formed a very tight and secure connection with the CPU in terms of thermal. No. I'm going to eventually flip the, uh, the, the entire chassis over because this case does have a cutout so you can see how the, uh, the heatsink is mounted in terms of how it went through the motherboard's holes and to see if you fully mounted all four sides of the heatsink. So now I'm going to skip forward to that. Alright, now we're at the back of the chassis with the opposite side panel open and as you can see this is the back of the motherboard precisely underneath where the CPU socket is that so you, you can see the um the heat sinks the pins have came out and that's exactly how you want them to look in terms of the stock Intel heat sink and fan all right so the CPU's installation is pretty much complete now the next components that I need is simply a uh, power supply, keyboard and mouse, and optical drive. Once I get those three, I just ordered them from Newegg today. Today's Friday, so I should be getting them on Monday or Tuesday. Once I get those three components, I can finally boot my computer and install Windows and pretty much get everything set up. I will not have my graphics processing unit at that time. I'll be getting that in the next two weeks. So for right now, I'm just going to be getting the, getting the computer set up, all the files on the hard drive, as you can see, is installed right there, and pretty much things like that. So I'm going to show you guys the motherboard real quick with everything uh, installed for right now. Uh, my cable management, I try my best to be as neat as possible. Pretty uh, it's pretty basic. I would rather the arm, um, the wires not be so colorful and just be simple black, so it can go better with the uh, motherboard's theme. But it doesn't really matter because the chassis that I have doesn't even have an internal black paint. It's just your typical steel, so it's all good. 
So that's pretty much been the installation of the Intel Central Processing Unit. I hope this video was informative to you guys. Thanks for watching, guys. Later.